Let Yourself Continue was curated for the Grinnell College Museum of Art by Associate Director Daniel Strong for Fall 2020. The exhibition includes more than 50 women artists from the museum's collection and was organized to commemorate the centennial of the 19th Amendment as we look to the future with an eye towards the work that continues for security, equality, and justice. In this video, Dan will talk about the exhibition in terms of the art market, collecting, and post-war abstraction. The post-war art world, having had its heart transplanted from Europe to New York, began a transformation in the 1950s and 60s in the hands of artists, dealers, collectors, and influential critics, mostly male, into what we now call the art market, a space that was, and in many ways still remains, inhospitable to women artists. The age that promoted and celebrated names like Jackson Pollock, Mark Rothko, Ellsworth Kelly, and Frank Stella is more rarely identified by names such as Lee Krasner, Grace Hartigan, Helen Frankenthaler, Agnes Martin, or Joan Mitchell, women pioneers in abstract art who are better known now than when they were still alive and working. Unfortunately, Grinnell College cannot claim precocious mid-20th century foresight in this regard, as none of these important women are represented in our collection. Important acquisitions of abstract art at that time came via gifts from collectors, most of whom confirmed the male-dominated trends in the market. We received an Ellsworth Kelly print in 1972. We purchased a Frank Stella print in 1982. But the most important abstract work in our collection remains the much-beloved Mobile by Alexander Calder, given to us by James and Dorothy Schramm in 1979. Among the women artists in this current exhibition, the Schrams gave us works by two women who took women as their subject matter, the sculpture by Doris Caesar, Mother and Child Number 21, and a print by Kata Kolvitz, Sharpening the Scythe. Names like Frankenthaler, Martin, and Mitchell are likely beyond our collection's reach now, unless by fortuitous gift. And our holdings in abstraction, by artists of any gender, have never been broad or deep. Yet discoveries, or rather rediscoveries, yield exciting opportunities. The wisdom and scholarship of Professor Jenny Anger, by which she is bringing back into light the startling work of Swiss post-war abstract artist Sonia Sekula, has prompted us to recently acquire two works that both enrich our collection and complement faculty research. Sekula was well known in her time, but bouts of mental illness, in addition to obstacles that prevented talented women from gaining the recognition they deserved, have obscured her career. The work of Professor Anger is undoing decades of disregard. In addition to the two Sekula acquisitions, we have in the past year made our first acquisition of the work of New York-based painter and experimenting printmaker Carrie Moyer whose compositions combine crisp, assured graphic shapes and contours with expressive layers at once more dimensional and more nebulous. Everything fluctuates and shimmies, inventive, even suggestive, a lively conversation. She had a room of her own at the Whitney Biennial in 2017, and she was featured in the 2019 exhibition, Queer Abstraction, at the Des Moines Art Center, alongside her partner, the sculptor Sheila Pepe, whose work was included in one of the Grinnell College Museum of Art's first exhibitions, Energy Inside, in the summer of 2001. See more of our collection, featured in the exhibition Let Yourself Continue, at grinnell.edu museum.